So just got done with a really awesome interview. You really want to watch this one. Like some of the things we talk about, I just didn't even know existed. And to imagine a 24 year old being faced with this, it's just unbelievable. So I'm, I'm super excited and proud to be a part of this and I'm excited. I, I hope you, hope you watch and I really think all of us can take something away and appreciate the ease of our normal lives in comparison to this 24 year old. It's pretty awesome. Y'all ready for this? Welcome to the Dan DeVerna podcast, where we talk about business, life, and how to win it both. So there, I, we'll get into why there's three of us here and all that, but like, let's establish first. Um, you kind of started in your line of work, which now you own, you're an entrepreneur yeah, and you own Vivian Kate. Mm-hmm. So why don't you tell us a little bit about how that started? Well, I always loved fashion and I always knew I'd eventually want to get into it. When I was young, I come from very humble beginnings and my mom was like, you get good grades. You're not going to make any money in fashion. I would really like you to do something else. So I actually graduated with a business degree I worked as an intern for Dana Corporation for a while. They made me a full-time offer when I graduated. And um, I worked there for a while, and then I moved to New York. I worked off of Wall Street. I came back, had kids, and um, after I had my children, I decided I really wanted to get back into business, but I wanted to be able to have a flexible schedule. So that's when I decided... And I thought there was a niche in Toledo for good shopping. So I thought it was a good opportunity for me to open my own store. Yeah. And there really is like it's, and it's not like at your ordinary store either. Like it's definitely like top of the food chain. Yeah. We like to have that big city feel. And I won't, I lived in New York. I wanted to bring that shopping, that vibe back to Toledo, Mm -hmm. my hometown. I love it here. And, um, I just always thought it lacked good shopping. So, yeah. Well, and being able to go somewhere where you actually get really well taken care of yes, is super meaningful. Like that just doesn't happen. You know, there's a handful of, of shops that I can even think of that do that men or women or, you know, it's, it's just not there anymore. Yeah, we really pride ourselves in giving good service. And I think that's part of the unique experience of having a small business is you do get catered to more. I know there are some other local boutiques that really take pride in that as well. And mm-hmm. um, I think that really just helps separate us. Yeah. I think it's really cool when you have somebody that their identity comes out in their store. Yeah. You know, cause yeah. when I, 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 I can't think of one without the other kind yeah. of thing with you. So it's like, Oh, oh yeah, that's, that's a compliment. and it's a, yeah, it to- totally a compliment. And I think it's pretty cool cause we both kind of come from comparable backgrounds. Like yeah. I can tell you when I quit my job, I was going to college and doing all that stuff. And when I quit my job to come do like the financial advisor thing, yeah. Everybody thought I was crazy. Like I was, I had a really good job. I was doing well, yeah. well, you know, and right. I just was like, that's not what my life was going to be. And it's not that that wasn't a great life. It's yeah. just, you know, it's just a different chapter. So it's always interesting to have somebody that you have that like kind of kinship with, if yeah. you will. And so that's, that's, uh, so how long has Vivian Kate been around? 15 Remind years. Us that happens fast, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it really does. I can't believe I've been doing anything for 15 years. <laughs> I know, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, wow. That's That happens, like, it's so interesting when you talk to people. Like, how long ago does it feel? I mean, it feels like yesterday. I still remember my grand opening, just praying that people were going to show up. You have those flashbacks to high school, like you're throwing a party and nobody comes. Right, yeah. So I'm like, please come to my party. Right. And we've been really lucky over the last 15 years. We've had a great following. We have great customers. Um, you know, the, the internet can be hard. And we have really loyal customers that check with us first before they go shopping online. And I'm really grateful for that. Yeah. Well, I think that philosophy that comes out, I mean, even during COVID, I, you know, we talked and you had some 
what I would call exceptional measures to make sure that your people were taken care of. And I, I thought that was, you know, that's part of how you still exist, right? Yeah, I think life will always throw you some, you know, challenges and you really have to learn to pivot through them. And I think sometimes um, coming from a diverse background, you learn to pivot pretty early in life. And I think that transpired into business for me as well. Yeah, that's it's pretty cool. I think when we talked about the things you were doing during the COVID stuff to keep like taking stuff to people. Yes. Like that was like, I'm like blown away because gosh, sometimes you're standing in the aisle. You can't even get somebody to help you see it. If you, they have size tens in this shoe. No, my favorite <laughs> is when they just point and the, the store is so big. And I'm like, can you please just take me and show me? Right. <laughs> I think it's aisle seven or right. aisle nine. I don't know. I can't remember, but. Right. Um, so, but, but let's talk about what brought us here. Yes. So, um, we're here with Abby and with yes. Carrie and we're, we're talking about like your recent, I mean, maybe it's not so recent nomination for the LLS woman of the year. Yes. And so what, how, like somebody as busy as you kids, business, like all that stuff. Like how does, how does, I understand why they would pick you, but I don't know a lot of people that would sacrifice like kind of their whole life for a time, for a window of time to do this. So can you tell us about kind of how it sprung up, if you will? And yes, then it's actually develop? a funny story. Um, so the night before I was nominated, I was went out for one of my girlfriend's birthdays and we indulged in some cocktails and I woke up the next day with a slight headache. <laughs> Have you ever woken up with a little bit of a headache and then you look at your phone and your headache gets worse? <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's what happened. Awesome. So I received this really kind uh, text from my friend Melanie asking if she could nominate me. And my first knee-jerk reaction, because I've known people that have run in the past and I knew how much work it was, I panicked in fear. Um, fear of the work, um, fear of my obsessive personality. Um, as I had told you before, I don't like to lose in checkers. And <laughs> if my name is attached to something, I want to be the best. And I don't even mean winning the competition. My brain goes to, I want to be the best that ever went in Toledo. Yeah. And I knew this would keep me up at night. And I called one of my girlfriends that ran in the past, and I said, how do I get out of this, and how do I do it with grace? I have three kids. They're in travel sports. I just don't think I can take this on. And she was very kind, and she said, it's really rewarding, and you can get out of it, but if you do it, I'll help you. And I said, give me 24 hours to think about it. So I go back in my bed, and I'm looking on my phone, and I see this post of Abby, and she's going through chemo, and it says at the bottom, fearless in a cute outfit. And I think that sometimes God speaks to you through other people, and I couldn't shake it. And I thought to myself, if there's a girl, 25 years old, that's going through chemo fearlessly and in a cute outfit, which spoke to me, mm -hmm. um, I can do this. Mm -hmm. And... If there's this amazing organization that has helped her through this process and can help other people, that is something that I should be involved with. And I don't think things in life happen by accident. And I definitely thought that Abby's story needed to be told. And I felt like this was the platform in which I was to tell it. Yeah. Wow. So that's like, put, gives you perspective, I guess. Yeah. Sometimes God just has to put you in check. Right. Yeah. So Abby is here with us. Yes. And so I don't really know Abby, <laughs> but I know Abby as like the like pretty badass like girl that's in all the ads and the, hey, look at this and look at this and look at this for Vivian Kate. Yes. And then just one day she cut her hair off and I've just assumed that she just continued her badassness and that's what that <laughs> was you. about yeah. and I, I mean because gorgeous and just Thank can you. do that right so but could you tell us a little bit about your story and and what your connection yeah. here is like the yeah. two of you have one that we haven't really expressed yet 
Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Carrie has been such a mentor to me over the years. Um, I started working for Carrie maybe three or so years ago. I don't even know. Um, working at the store primarily and doing, you know, customer service, that kind of thing. And my background is also in fashion. I've always loved fashion and art, and um, I got my degree in photography. So it was kind of a natural fit for us. And um, we ended up just getting really close through me working for Carrie and, uh, you know, just establishing such a connection beyond just, you know, being an employee of the store. So, um, yeah, I mean, I consider her a, a mentor and a friend more than anything. But um, my story, gosh, I mean, I I was just kind of a normal 24-year-old girl, Um it actually took me almost a full year to get my diagnosis. I could tell that there was something off about me. There was, um, you know, this fatigue that I couldn't shake every day, amongst other things. And eventually I started to feel this lump in my neck. And uh, I, I also struggled with, you know, I had mono. I had, like, some lymph node issues. So I kind of figured, okay, whatever. We'll get it checked out. Um no one really likes to go to the doctor, let's be honest. Right. No one wants to go. But I really just, you know, I was listening to my intuition, and I knew that there was something wrong. So, um, yeah, I, I went to the doctor. We ran all these scans and these tests. Everything came back fine. Uh, then there was a period of about six to eight months of just continuing those tests. You know, nothing was getting better. I was getting kind of more lymph nodes that were showing up and kind of like a tumor-like way. So it was getting um, a little bit scary, but the doctors assumed that it had to do with the vaccine because I had gotten the vaccine around this time and that could have been a side effect. So, um, you know, I, at some point, my doctor did say we're, we ruled out lymphoma and, or lymphoma and leukemia. We, we ruled it out, so you're good. So... Because um, your blood work, they did blood my, work yes. and her blood work came back. Normal. Perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My blood work, my mm. scans. Uh, there was really no reason to assume that anything was wrong with me besides, you know, like those those symptoms plaguing me. So um, finally, I kept chasing after it because I just had this feeling I needed to just keep going. And uh, in August, I finally got a biopsy done, and um, the pathologist told me right on the spot, you know, we we think that this is cancer. We think there's a 75% chance that it's Hodgkin's lymphoma, um, but we know that it's cancer. So obviously being 24, I mean, that just, you know, your world just turns upside down. And I um, also come from a family where my mom had been diagnosed with breast cancer like three years prior. So cancer was no stranger to my family, and I had seen her journey and known how hard it was to be a caretaker of sorts, as well as just her daughter, watching her go through that. Um, you know, so for our family, it was like, this can't happen again. That's ridiculous. But um, yeah, so from there, from August, I believe it was August 16th or 17th. I should probably know the day. <laughs> Most people do. But um, yeah, everything changed for me. I, you know, I started going to different appointments every single day, getting all this testing done. Uh, multiple surgeries. Um, I was trying to work through this time as well, and then also freelance photography. So it was really difficult to kind of have all of those things like coming at me full force. But um, yeah, I started chemotherapy late September after doing um, about four weeks of fertility treatments to freeze my eggs, since I am 20, 25 now. But I want to be able to have kids someday. Not now, but someday. <laughs> right, right on. And uh, yeah, so then I started chemotherapy. Uh, I had four rounds down. And usually uh, about halfway through chemotherapy, they run another PET scan to see how things are looking. So my PET scan in November actually came back completely clean, which was awesome. Awesome. Um, and I was told, okay, you're done with chemotherapy. We moved to radiation. I'd, I had a bad feeling about it. Like I, my intuition again there was something wrong. I was like, this is a little too rushed. I don't, I don't think this is right. And I ended up being correct because I got a call a couple weeks later that said, you know, we've, we've talked to some people from the Cleveland clinic. We've had a team of doctors kind of look over this and we just, because you're young, we really want you to be safe. 
So uh, they decided to continue with chemotherapy. So I ended up getting um, eight rounds of ABVD chemo in all. And then uh, I switched to do 15 rounds of radiation from February to March. So um, as of now, I'm officially cancer-free. I'm done. I'm done with all my surgeries. I actually had a surgery last week to get my port out, which was um, a device in your chest that you receive chemo through. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, I mean, it's been an absolutely insane experience. Uh, The most difficult year of my life by far, but so many rewarding things have come out of it. Um, I'm actually just getting chills thinking about it. Just the amount of love that I've received and support from, you know, everyone, like this whole community in Toledo, but then this community all over the world and these organizations like LLS who really, really helped me through all these times. Um, And I think cancer has this stigma that a lot of people want to keep it in. They want to keep it quiet. It can be embarrassing. It can be shameful. Um, It's obviously not easy to be 25 and have to buzz your hair off by any means. Mm -hmm. Um, And from there, I decided... You know, I could keep this in and I could keep it to myself and let it be a private journey. But what if I shared it? What if I told my story? And what if that helped even one person? What if one other person that saw my the things that I post or the things that I say could, you know, benefit from it? So, you know, with that being said, that kind of also went into this decision with Carrie on, uh, you know, helping support her to run for Woman of the Year. Yeah, we've started this whole Facebook page called Abby Story, and we really wanted to run this campaign differently where I wanted to take the spotlight off of me and really use this platform to tell her story. And so people could see what it's like to be 25 years old, going through cancer treatment, going through chemo. I I don't think so much people care about making a store owner woman of the year, but they do care about someone with a big heart and that's 25 years old going through this journey and supporting an organization that helped her during that time. Um, More specifically, there's a great LLS story, um, how they helped Abby, but when she was first diagnosed, it was the first call that she received was from LLS, just telling her that they were a resource for her, um, they were there to help her, they were on her team. I think that was very comforting for her. I won't speak for her. Um, but I think in addition to that, one big thing that they did is they helped, they hooked her up with an organization that helped her with the funds for the egg freezing process. And she had to make decisions relatively quickly. She was going to have to start chemo and, and you don't have time to come up with the money for something like that. Right. So for them to take that off of her plate and, let her kind of just deal with what she was dealing with, but at the same time give her the comfort and knowing that one day she'd still be able to have children, that's huge. It's a big deal. Mm -hmm. And I I do remember that call. I remember where I was standing when I took that call um, from a really kind man who works for the organization. And, yeah, it was the first person that had really reached out to me. And I remember crying on the phone to a total stranger um, and just thinking, gosh, this is so embarrassing. And it was so comforting to know that someone was there for me, even if it was a stranger over the phone. Um, It was so comforting to know that someone cared and that someone could help walk me through this process. Because at the beginning, especially, it is so overwhelming. It is, you know, appointments every single day. You don't really know what you're getting yourself into. Mm -hmm. Of course, before chemo, you sign a packet of papers that you know, signal, okay, I understand the side effects. I know what this could do to my body. But um, yeah, I mean, that call really was a life changer for me because it, it came at the perfect time. And like you said, sometimes, you know, God speaks through other people and you don't, you don't know what you need until you hear it or until you see it in front of you. And um, yeah, that was, that was the one, the one call that stood out to me. So, and um, you know, pharmaceuticals can be very expensive. So especially when you're doing, you know, an elective process like freezing your eggs, it was a really tough decision for me to make because I'm not ready to have kids yet. But I know that I don't want that to be a compromise later in my life that I didn't decide to, you know, make that change now. Mm -hmm. Um, 
So having that resource and being able to be connected with all these people that could help me and could make this process even a tiny bit easier, that that's life changing. And that's what LLS really does. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and, and, and I can, rel- I, I cannot relate on any level with cancer, but when I talk to people, they're just in my line of work and everybody's got their, like, if you're not used to speaking in those terms, I can't even fathom like, cause some of the words you probably were familiar with because of mom, mm-hmm. but like mm-hmm. now it's you and yeah. you're 25 years old, 24 years old. Like that just, it just doesn't make any sense. A like, lot of adults that follow her on Facebook are customers of ours and they'll tell me they can't get over some of her posts that she's 25 years old and dealing with this. Yeah. You know, you think about the problems you have when you come home from work and it seems like a walk in the park compared to some of the things that she's posting. Um, but that's a lot of people's reality. I mean, every three minutes someone's getting diagnosed with blood cancer. And a lot of times it's young people like her. Um, leukemia is the number one form of childhood cancer. And this is real. Mm-hmm. So if they want to follow that story, yes, where do where can they find that on Facebook? Under It's called Abby's Story. And that's a B B E Y S. All right. Story. Got it. Good. Mm-hmm. Good. Good. So, everybody spells their names a little bit That's different. A good so I no, like to get I the details e of those things, which yes. is great. I have an Abby <laughs> that works with me that's got an E also, and oh, I know that's, awesome. that's not super common. Yeah. But um, so so you really picked up this baton. It, even more, it's not. This isn't really just about you. And actually, you have had a, a late relative that... Yes, actually. Um, when I was about 21 years old, my cousin, who was 15 at the time, got diagnosed with leukemia. And it was so hard for our family because that was the first person that we've ever really experienced seeing sick. Mm-hmm. And when you see a kid get sick, it's amplified so much more... Yeah. Um, and the helplessness Mm -hmm. and he was so courageous and brave throughout his fight but um, eventually um, a couple years into his treatment he passed away and you think no 15 year old should pass away because of cancer yes and you know I, I remember sitting on his bed and him saying I've never been to prom I don't have my driver's license and he knew he was gonna die I mean, I can't imagine being 15 years old knowing that you're not going to make it. Yeah, it just doesn't seem fair. No. You know, I I think it's, you know, it's very, it's very emotional because you have, it just doesn't, this stuff doesn't make sense. Like humans are, No. it's so interesting. I have a grandfather who's 98 years old. Yeah. Lives by himself still. Yeah. Like it doesn't make sense. He would gladly, like switch spots with one of these young people like hey I've lived my you know I've lived my life but he continues makes it through COVID and those situations (laughs) and then you have these uh, on the other end so it's so awesome to have like have a setup like a a non-for-profit that's just there to help because it's the first time for you it's not exactly the first time for your family but to have somebody that's walked through this a hundred times or a thousand times it's a, it's, you know, it's must be a supportive mechanism that, that really needs all of our support, frankly, yeah. you know, like, like absolutely for sure. So let's talk a little bit about what the woman of the year, what kind of what that, so when you, when you're doing that, yeah. that it's a fundraising and that you have a target goal and we don't need to get into all of that, but like the objective is over 10 weeks for you to raise a lot of money to be able to continue programs like the one that's helped Abby so much, right? Yeah, it's a philanthropic competition. Um, They usually have five men, five women, and it's a competition to see who can raise the most money. And in the end, whoever wins is called Man or Woman of the Year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as competitive as I am, I don't think there are really any losers in this competition. Right. When you're raising money for this organization that's going to help people like Abby, um, I think everybody wins. Right. For sure. 
So what would be, and we'll probably throw this in a couple times, we'll yeah. throw it in the, like on the links and stuff. So yeah. how can, if somebody said, sees the story, knows Abby's story, what is the best way for them to be able to contribute? Like, let's start with financially. We uh, have fundraising pages on our Facebook pages. Um, we have fundraising pages that will you'll attach the links to. Yep. We'll also be throwing events so you can attend events mm -hmm. that will help raise money for um, this cause. And you can give an individual donation. You could do a corporate sponsorship or you could even just attend an event, but any support. We're also um, doing something fun. Abby uh, designed a t-shirt and we will be selling t-shirts um, through jute mode. Awesome. Um, so that's really fun too. It's an inexpensive way to show your support. And I yeah. think it's extra fun that she was the artist behind. That's cool. You know, she's creative. Super so, cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. So people can help with, so I assume you have to have something like this, even though you're considered running for woman of the year. Yeah. Like you mentioned a friend that said they would help you, but so you kind of have to have a team for this. Like this isn't, yes. this isn't you with Abby in your, the sidecar, like garage. running down the road. <laughs> like the, it's that not, <laughs> that might be our next, yeah. <laughs> it's not a terrible idea. <laughs> it's not the worst idea I've ever had, but uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I learned early on in business. You are only as good as your team. And I have 14 fierce wow. women from diverse backgrounds. And I mean, I have a C CFO, I have a senior vice president, I have teachers, I have a principal, I have local business owners. These women could run the country. <laughs> and I'm super I will, lucky to I have agree. them on. <laughs> I agree. They <laughs> I, know. I don't know them all, but I totally agree. <laughs> They, I'm super proud to have them on my team. They are amazing women. They're leaders in their community. They're leaders in their own perspective businesses. I am super excited, and I think that we're going to do great things. Yeah. I mean, you're already doing great things. Like, it's already happening. So we're we're – this is going to be out. This is at the very beginning. So – just because we're at the beginning, please make sure you're clicking on the links and donating and getting involved in these things because this happens really fast. Yes. Like you knew, you've known for a little while that you were going to have this, but this is what, 10 weeks? So yes. it's a sprint now. It's like a you've sprint. been kind of yeah, gearing up, getting in shape. Yes. And, but yeah, a sprint. <laughs> I, I, like I said, I haven't slept since November since I've accepted. Um, I haven't either for different <laughs> reasons. Yeah. <laughs> different, yeah. But wow. So yeah, 10 weeks is going to happen, happen really, really fast. So do you have like just a taste on any of the, we've got the t-shirts, like that's a cool way. Yes. I like that. Just donating, clicking on the links and donating money. That's obviously fantastic and super simple. We have um, a dinner planned at the Chop House, which we'll be selling tickets hopefully next week for, uh, for May 5th. Um, proceeds go to LLS. And then we have a fashion show that we're planning at the beginning of June, and it's going to include survivors and um, a tribute to a dance teacher that has leukemia. A lot of really fun, great things um, where we'll see our community come together and local businesses come together. It's some really great things. Awesome. That's super cool. Is there anything else we should be talking about? Well, I mean, I, I do think what's cool about Carrie's run especially is how true to herself she's being and how genuine. Um, and also fashion being something I'm really interested in. It was important for us both to kind of have that come out, especially in the events. So, mm -hmm. Um, and I, we both love food as well. So I think, yeah. I think the events are going to be a really awesome way to make money, but they're also, they're going to be, you know, so true to us and so true to what we love and, you know, what a true celebration of life is for us. Well, and let's face it, we've all been sitting in our house. We're looking for some really great events yeah. for sure. to go to. <laughs> yeah. We're looking to get dressed up and do some fun things. So Absolutely. I think it'll be awesome. Yeah, I think it is. It is. It's very interesting. I think the timing of this for you is unique because I do think this is the first 
like little run we've had like a couple months of people actually coming out and not having a fear of having to go back in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like each time it's almost like, Oh wait, there's another variant or another Mm -hmm. whatever. And so everybody's been very skittish on that. But now I think at least here in Ohio, people are ready to come, <laughs> people out. Are ready mm-hmm. to come out and they're starting to do it. And I think the timing of that is going to be awesome. Along with people actually have money right now. Yeah. And you know, you have money right now. Yeah. So <laughs> we like, help like them spend that money, <laughs> spend the money, spend the money at the shop, spend the money on the, I mean, what better cause? I just can't even, no. even imagine. And I've been involved in a few, you know, charity funds, but that like that story is I, I would not have thought about like at, of course, at 24 years old, having to think about this big decision of, you know, setting yourself up for the future and how a, a normal 24 year old would be able to even come up with the idea and be able to implement it is pretty awesome yeah. that they have programs that you can do things like that and, and make people's lives at the hardest point of their lives better. Well, it's mm-hmm. interesting because I didn't even, when I first accepted the nomination, aside from knowing her cancer, I didn't know the story and that LLS did for her. And I was really frustrated one day, and she didn't even know it. And I I was late getting out of my house. I was going to do something for LLS. My kid needed a ride. The house was a mess. Just one of those days. And I'm like, why do I do this? I take on too much. And I was so mad at myself. And out of the blue, I get this message from Abby. And she said, hey, when is that event for LLS? And, you know, I told her. And she said, it's a really important organization to me. They were the first people to reach out to me. And then she went into the whole story. And I was like... I'm oh geez right now she has to <laughs> yeah. well, it just made me feel like again you know it was the it was what I was supposed to do yeah well it's real yes you know real yeah. real and yeah. and to somebody that yeah at the timing is just it's a, it's a bigger calling right yeah. it's a yeah, purpose sure. there's a purpose I don't think things happen by accident and mm. I think that we were brought together for more than just fashion yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> Pretty awesome. Pretty and awesome. well, um, an interesting fact with LLS too is, and something that I think about a lot is, um, in 1960, if I was diagnosed with the same disease, I would have a less than 10% chance of survival. And because wow. primarily of LLS and all of the work they've done to advance treatment, my prognosis is around 90%. So you can see, you know, in just that short period of time, the amount of work that's gone into, you know, developing cures for this and developing, you know, things that can make people's lives easier. Um, you know, it, it really, it really does make a difference. You don't see that type of, you know, that difference made from most charities, but with LLS, it is true. That's awesome. That's absolutely awesome. That's great. You don't think of those things. I mean... Very few times do we have a situation where it so applies, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. so awesome. Good, good. Well, I appreciate your time. Thank well, you. Thanks for having really us back. Excited to have the, be getting the word out. Like we are going to get full force behind, behind the team here. So Thank you. pretty exciting. Thank you. Thanks guys. It was exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah.